We fans of the MMO genre end every single year in more or less the same way. Disappointed in the year that's passed and looking to the future in hopes that the next year will bring something better. I mean, that's what we have to do, right? Otherwise, that means giving up on MMOs and that's something a lot of us just can't do. This year has been much the same. We haven't really seen anything released that has stood out. At best, Estelia Online turned out a bit mediocre. Arcade Unchained wasn't what people wanted it to be. And, okay, well, Final Fantasy XIV released their Shadowbringers expansion, which has been heavily praised as the best MMO expansion ever. And WoW Classic launched to a very positive reception, but overall, it was a lackluster year for new releases. Next year, and don't hate me for saying this, but actually looks to be looking up for MMORPGs, as we have so many new games either confirmed to be releasing or launching in some form of playable state. And I'm excited. So here we are, the final top MMORPG video of 2019. Five confirmed MMORPGs coming in 2020. I hope you guys are ready. Yes, we're gonna go ahead and start this off with Amazon's upcoming New World MMORPG. Not a lot of information was released regarding the game over much of its production. What we knew earlier this year was that it was going to be a PvP-focused survival game, much like Ark or Rust, and I'll admit that definitely has an audience. Then the developers kind of went quiet for a while, and that caused a lot of distress in the community. People thought that they'd given up, that they'd ceased development. Thankfully, that was not the case, as instead it was announced that New World has not only made great strides in terms of general development, but heck, they'd also set their eye on both a closed beta and a full release launch date. They revealed their new trailer for the game, which honestly looks really damn good, but also made the revelation that the game was no longer going to be a sandbox survival game. At least not in the traditional sense. Instead, they claim it's going to be an actual MMORPG that has a capacity of up to 1,000 players concurrently per server. The game is set in a large sandbox world, with players playing through the game on a single large landmass. Combat will take the form of third-person action, with a variety of weapon types being equipable at any given time, and a plethora of skills to learn and master if you want to overcome enemies in not only PvE, but also PvP. There are absolutely no classes in-game, instead having players rely on the use of weapon swapping depending on the situation and the necessary role. There is going to be a large focus on PvP, although from what I'm aware of, you're no longer forced into it. There are various territories guilds can claim that earn them beneficial bonuses, but controlling those territories ultimately leaves you open to attack as well, having guilds constantly at war with one another vying for supremacy of the land. I am very excited for New World because it's being created by quite a large company with quite a bit of funding. It looks and sounds like it could be a very fun MMO to play with up to a thousand other players in and having to make political alliances to survive sounds like something that I'd at the very least be willing to try. I honestly don't know if I could do it personally, but I sure as hell would love the opportunity to try to. New World has a closed beta scheduled for April 2020 with a full release coming in May 2020. I have talked about Phantasy Star Online 2 repeatedly since Microsoft made their announcement that the game would finally be launching in North America in 2020. We have been waiting nearly 8 years to get the game over here, so you can bet that I am excited to play it. To date, it's still one of Japan's top rated MMORPGs, and us Western players have been thirsting after this game ever since Sega released it. PSO2 was announced earlier this year at E3, after which pretty much no mention of anything pertaining to the game was released in any form, until out of seemingly nowhere, Microsoft revealed that closed beta would be happening in the very near future for players playing through the Xbox One. Registration is actually currently open this very moment for people trying to get into the closed beta. I will include a link on how to go about registering for the closed beta for anyone that's interested in the game in the description in the pinned comment below. Fantasy Star Online 2 is a very highly stylized anime inspired MMORPG and while it was released way back in 2012, it still remains one of the closest experiences you will get to a complete anime MMO. There's no open world, there's no sandbox, instead PSO2 has you set in a large space hub where you take quests from various NPCs, participate in story related content, customize your skills and more. Content is, for the most part, instanced after accepting quests, after deciding to go out and explore, you're mostly cut off from other players that aren't already a part of your group. It has very 
very highly engaging combo oriented action combat that allows for players to swap between several different weapon types at any given time, providing you with the ability to fulfill various different roles within the group. There are also several races and classes in game with each class having their own specialties. The main focus of the game is PvE though, as while there is a PvP scene, it isn't really nearly as frequented as other games and honestly from what I've been told, doesn't really offer much in the way of reward as opposed to the time invested into it. Fantasy Star Online 2 has always been a fun MMORPG for me, and I look forward to Microsoft releasing it over here in North America. It is truly one of the best anime MMOs available, and is easily one of the most perfected hub-based MMOs on the market. Fantasy Star Online 2 has an expected closed beta scheduled for February 2020, with a full release coming for Xbox One in Spring 2020, having a full release on a PC later in the year at a currently unconfirmed date. And yes, while that does kinda suck for PC players, we're still going to get it just at a later date. This one really came out of nowhere. Prior to their announcement, I had no idea that this was a game that was even under development. Yet, I'm glad to see that it was, and this is the perfect time to. Lost Ark is currently in the process of undergoing internal testing to get a Western release. Project TL just announced that they were going ahead with a release in South Korea in 2020. Diablo 4 was just announced this year by Blizz. Path of Exile 2 was announced at ExileCon. So many top-down isometric action games are in the process of launching that this is a perfect time to get ahead of them and weasel themselves into a share of the market ahead of the game. The devs behind Corpunk claim that the game is going to feature a large large, seamless open world for players to explore. Unlike most games that either have classes or opt to not include classes, Core Punk actually has heroes. But not heroes in the sense of like a MOBA where they're already preset, predetermined heroes with little customization to be had. Instead, this game will actually offer the normal, traditional class archetypes in the form of tanks, healers, and DPS while providing hero specialization flexibility. This means that while your hero is likely going to excel in one area more than another, each and every hero is highly customizable into the character that you kind of want to play. Every hero has three distinct weapon specializations with each weapon weapon having their own combat style and associated abilities. Combat is action based and in the trailer supplied, gameplay itself, both combat and even movement, does admittedly look just a little bit slow. However, the devs behind the game have promised via their official forums and even through a direct email to me that they have already begun working on the general speed of the game and have improved it quite significantly so it no longer feels, I don't know, I guess like as sluggish as it does. This will likely be shown off in a future trailer though, so be on the lookout for that. As for PvE, there will be various dungeons and raids for players to tackle either solo or with a group. PvP will have both open world PvP that players can opt in or out of via a toggle system with instance PvP like arenas also being a thing. Corepunk is currently undergoing internal alpha testing, however the devs have expressed their interest to begin a closed beta testing in the very near future. While there is no confirmation on when specifically that will be and when that will be available for the public to actually test, they did reveal that they plan on beginning open beta testing by the end of around 2020. If you haven't heard of Temtem, then you have been missing out. I am a giant Pokemon fan. Mrs. Sticks and I are actually in the process of finishing off Pokemon Sword literally as I am writing this up. Yeah, I'm currently sitting on my bed with my laptop in my lap while she's attempting to catch a level 50 Flygon with her Bolton that she named Bork at 4 a.m. in the morning. I don't know, maybe we should call someone. Maybe we just need to finish the game. We'll see how much longer the game really takes to finish, I guess. If we end up malnourished, then you guys know what happened. Plain Bork. Now, Temtem is probably the closest thing you will ever get to a Pokemon MMO. I feel like a Pokemon MMO with the kind of backing that Game Freak and Nintendo would or could be one of the most densely populated, feature-rich, profitable MMOs ever made, considering how thirsty people are for anything Pokemon related. But I don't know, I digress. Temtem is set in a very large, pretty open world. I played the game for around eight to 10 hours, and then I went ahead and continued for a few more hours off screen before stopping so I could experience the rest of the game with Mrs. Sticks. But in that time, I had more or less the freedom to go where I wanted and do what I wanted, with the odd NPC cutting me off from progressing until I beat the dojo leaders, which is Temtem's version of a gym leader. Unlike most MMOs that offer classes or opt to not offer classes and instead offer weapon types, or if you're like Corpunk, instead offer preset heroes, 
Temtem takes a step in yet another interesting direction. Instead, you take on the role of a human in control of the Temtem, seeking out new Temtem to capture, level and evolve, as opposed to leveling yourself, learning new abilities for your character. It's an interesting divergence from the norm, one that I'm excited for because it's so outlandish, so drastically different to what we're used to. The combat is turn-based, sending out two Temtem to fight at any given time. There is no action, everything relies completely on your Pokemon stats and abilities. If you've ever played a Pokemon game, then I can guarantee you, Temtem is just like it. Temtem will be launching into early access on January 21st, 2020. That's a mere few weeks off for fans wanting to play. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, depending on who you are, Lost Ark is an MMORPG that a lot of you have been anticipating for almost as long as this channel has been running, which yeah, granted, it is only a couple years, but I wanted to add a little bit of flair to... <clears throat> okay, well, you know what? Never mind. Lost Ark is a South Korean MMO with an isometric camera view like Diablo 3 or Path of Exile or Tree of Savior or even Devillion. I've played the South Korean version of the game and the Russian version of the game both. While the South Korean version of the game requires a South Korean social security number along with a VPN, the Russian version doesn't. All you need is a normal VPN or to live in Russia. The VPN, however, can range from, I don't know, like a couple dollars for a decent one per month. I personally use Exit Lag to access a Russian version of Lost Ark, and for those of you that are wondering, a link can be found in the video description if you want to go ahead and try it out for a few days for free. Now back on topic, Lost Ark is your fairly traditional MMO. It's set in a large open world with lots of NPCs to take and complete quests at, large cities to explore and just chill in, and features a fairly interesting narrative with which to progress the story forward. There is plenty of customization to be had, physical character customization, and a variety of different class choices after completing the initial tutorial for the game. While the game does feature a large world, it also features two forms of travel, both by land and by sea, opening up new encounters, new scenarios, and new opportunities to explore and conquer. I've never played an isometric action game that had poor combat. Every game I have tried, even if the overall game turned out to be terrible, had at the very least decent functioning combat. Lost Ark is absolutely no different. It features some great, high quality action combat with lots of combos, plenty of flashy special effects for skills, and well, I mean, let's be honest here. It is a South Korean game. That is what they're known for after all. While there is no 100% definitive release date for the game right now, the developers behind Lost Ark were looking to hire various staff that are fluent in English to help with the upcoming release of the game in the West. They've since completed their recruitment phase and are very, very, very close to announcing the game in English. It's honestly unlikely that we're really very far off from it at this point. People have been claiming for what seems like, I don't know, forever at this point, that the MMORPG genre is dying. That just is not true. When Final Fantasy XIV released their Shadowbringers expansion, they saw record high subscription numbers. World of Warcraft's Battle for Azeroth expansion and WoW Classic relaunch had ridiculous numbers, just like their upcoming Shadowlands expansion no doubt will. We have amazing looking games like the games mentioned in this list, we have upcoming MMOs like Blue Protocol or Project BBQ to name a couple off the top of my head. The genre is far from dying. It's actually in the process of picking right back up at this juncture, and I am excited to not only be a part of this next chapter, but to be able to actually actively be a part of growing the genre with our viewers. Because you know what? Together, we make up a large percentage of players that play MMOs. You guys are as much a part of this channel as I am, and I look forward to moving into these upcoming games with all of you. 2020 is going to be a very exciting year. We have a lot to look forward to, and Mrs. Sticks and I have a lot to be grateful for as well. So, to end this, I guess, first and foremost, thank you all for 200,000 subscribers. We have an official thank you video coming up probably after the new year, but until then, Merry Christmas, thank you all for an epic 2019, and let's show 2020 that we're all ready for it. But hey, that's just my opinion, my first impressions of what we should be looking forward to moving into 2020. What do you guys think? Are you looking forward to any of these games? Do any of them look exciting, and will you try any of them out? Let me know down in the comments below, and let's talk about it. Anyway guys, that's it for me. Thanks for watching, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you all next time. Peace! Dance, dance.